Silica is a common mineral found in many materials used on construction sites, such as sand, stone, soil and concrete, and brick, block, and mortar. Workers who breathe in silica dust can be at increased risk of developing serious health conditions, including silicosis, lung cancer, and other respiratory diseases. For some tasks, the silica exposure is very low due to low or no dust creation. Therefore, silica dust controls would not be required. However, high silica exposure occurs during construction activities that create dust, and most of them are common on every job site. Let's take a look at some steps to protect workers from the hazards associated with exposure to silica dust. First, identify tasks that involve exposure to silica. Then, designate a competent person to implement the control plan. They must be trained to recognize silica hazards and understand how to correct the hazards. Then also restrict access to work areas where high silica exposure may occur. Before beginning any project, all tools and equipment must be inspected, operated, and maintained in accordance with manufacturer's instructions to ensure they are functioning properly. Be sure to check pumps, hoses, and nozzles, water flow rates, proper airflow rate and capacity for vacuum equipment, correct rotation of the blade for both speed and direction, maintain and change saw blades, and frequently change water. There are generally two main methods used to control silica dust, wet methods and vacuum dust collection systems. Wet methods use water to keep dust from getting into the air and are typically the best choice for controlling silica dust. Saws, drills, and other equipment with integrated water delivery systems continually feed water to the blade or cutting surface, reducing the amount of silica dust that becomes airborne and controlling exposure at its source. Only use water delivery systems specifically designed for the type of tool in use so that water is effectively applied and does not interfere with tool components or safety devices. And always follow the manufacturer's guidelines. Any slurry generated should be cleaned up to limit secondary exposure to silica dust when the slurry dries. When wet methods cannot be used, vacuum dust collection systems are a good option, although less effective for reducing exposure. These systems are designed to effectively capture dust at the cutting point. They include a vacuum and hose, a dust collection device, such as a shroud or cowling, and a high-efficiency particulate air filter in the vacuum exhaust. When using heavy equipment for jobs like excavation and grading, enclosed cabs can reduce an operator's potential silica exposure. Workers operating this equipment should remain inside the vehicle while the silica dust generating activity is in progress. To be effective, the cab must be well sealed and ventilated and have positive pressure ventilation systems to isolate operators from dust and have heating and air conditioning to encourage operators to keep windows and doors closed. In some operations where silica exposures cannot be sufficiently controlled through wet or dry methods, additional protection in the form of respirators may also be needed. A NIOSH certified filtering respirator that covers the nose and mouth, sometimes referred to as a dusk mask respirator, must be used. The N95 respirator should have an assigned protection factor, APF, of at least 10. After the job is complete, precautions need to be taken for housekeeping tasks, such as dry sweeping to minimize silica dust. Workers should use one of the following cleanup methods to control silica dust exposure. A HEPA filtered vacuum, wet sweeping, or use a sweeping compound to hold down dust. Silica is not just dust. It can pose significant health hazards, but with the proper precautions, exposure can be greatly reduced or eliminated, creating a safer worksite.